Okay, we are live. You know when you like go to start something and you get interrupted like <laughs> 10 times more? So this live stream is a personal share, is a personal update. So if you don't have anything nice to say, please don't say it. If you're new to this page, if you're just getting to know me, and if you don't listen to the entire live stream, don't fucking comment and say, you're talking too fast, you're jumping all over the place, you're lost, you don't know what you're saying, what's that shit on your face? If you don't have anything nice to say, please don't say it. If you're not understanding what I'm saying, how about you shut your mouth and listen. That is my boundaries. Welcome to my live stream. My name is Hannah from Reality Awareness. This is a personal share. So for some of you who don't know me, who have just met me and are new to my page, I say welcome. Uh, it does take a bit to get to know me, I think, if you don't understand how I talk or I do jump all over the place. And like, this isn't a like formal presentation. This is me jumping on a Facebook Live and sharing about me. This particular live stream, live stream is sharing about my story, an update, some pretty heavy things, some pretty big things. And the way that I share is that I share my story because I teach. I teach you to trust the intuition. I teach you to empower yourself. And that comes from living. It comes from living in your everyday life. Our intuition doesn't just switch off. It's always on. I'm passionate about teaching you to trust the intuition in day-to-day -day life, not like having to go to a 10-day Vipassana retreat and sit there and learn how to meditate. I'm like, no, let's do it real time. Sure, those things benefit you, and if you're called to them, go to them. But most people are like, I don't have time to do this. I don't have time to do that. We lead busy lifestyles, and I'm all about let's make it work in reality. Yeah, let's make it work in your everyday reality. So when I come on live stream and I share my thoughts, it's not a formal training. <laughs> you pay for my formal trainings, okay? And then you'll get the proper like set up and, you know, formal script that I follow. No, it's kind of an intuitive script, but <laughs> I guess my, I am a little bit tainted with my intro here <laughs> because uh, my Dalai Lama live stream went it slightly viral and got a lot of hate comments and I'm like, why, why, why are you watching something that you hate? Like guys, like turn it off. It doesn't make sense. And if you're not going to say it to my face in public, don't be a keyboard warrior. Grow some balls and get the fuck a life, right? Pretty much. So I'm coming off the eclipse energy. <laughs> so get ready for some fire. But this is a big share and I am setting some strong boundaries because I just you know, like I tolerate stuff and I tolerate stuff and then I reach my limit and I'm like, really guys? Like, come on. Of course it doesn't apply to everyone, but just needed to open my live stream like that. Okay, I'm just gonna share this live stream and I shall be present with you because holy moly, this eclipse, this eclipse season, this last few weeks, this last five weeks, this last six weeks, this last eight weeks, holy shit. Holy shit, right? Oh my God, it's been insane. <laughs> Anyone who doesn't think the last few weeks have been insane have not been living on this planet. <laughs> In my personal opinion, because it's been a bit ridiculous. Energies have been insanely ridiculous. Okay. One more share and I'm present with you. So surrender is an interesting topic. Um, yeah, insane, huge shakeups, old patterns. Like, and I know eclipses, eclipse off past eclipses, right? And lessons and learnings and all, all the things. Uh, but this particular cycle, and I think, I come on, an, I'm not an astrologer. I mean, you know, you can follow people who are uh, proper professional astrologers. Um, 
so as Chris Rex says, like, you know, this is Chris's crappy astrology, not, <laughs> not, not a professional astrologer, you know, but there's something to do with whatever astrological lineup that this is like tail ending a 17 year cycle as well. Like there's like, and I'm like, wow, that's pretty significant. So 17 years for me, this is a personal share, this live stream. So if you don't have time to listen fully, if you don't understand what I'm saying, how about you open your ears and you actually listen to the whole thing because I do jump around when I'm sharing different things and then I piece it all together and the gift comes at the end. So if you don't have time to watch it, multitask, listen, you know, put your friends in, whatever, but just don't comment if you don't have anything nice to say because I'm not in the space for it. Um, so I'm just going to pop that there so I can see the comments because I forgot about that. Um, so, sorry, I'll just bring that up. I did forget about the comments here. Perfect. Um, yeah, and like I've been, I feel like I've been hiding. And I have felt that for a little while. And, you know, 17 years ago is when I had my spiritual awakening. Like that is literally when I had my spiritual awakening. That's when all of this started for me. Um yeah, Fiona says it feels like 19 years for me. So that's really interesting. So something really exciting, guys. Do you know what? Like, here's like the best news of the entire fucking live stream. Da -da 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 -da. My book is at the editors. Can we get a celebration for that, please? This is a big deal. <laughs> and do you know why it's such a big deal? Number one, when I had my spiritual awakening in 2005, I literally... Um, you know, all it was, was going to write books, going to write books, like write a book, write a book, write a book. And over the years, I've written like many books, but they've never been published and they were never proper books. It was just me telling my life story. And like in this last, you know, so 18 months ago was the dog attack. And, you know, in my, in my, okay, my book. Okay. I'm jumping all over because I'm getting really excited. Are you ready? <laughs> My book is on the editors. It will be, I'm pretty sure, I don't know, but ETA, intuitive ETA, is that it will be out on Amazon in June. Don't quote me on that. I'm working on it though. It's at the editors. And I was like, oh my God, like in 17 years ago was when I had my spiritual awakening. And I'm like, it's taken me 17 years of walking, talking, teaching, preaching this life this lifestyle, got a tattoo on my face. This is who I am, okay? Because <laughs> I need a tattoo to show you who I am. No, it came in meditation. All my tattoos come in meditation. That's why I get them. Um, <laughs> so 17 years of living, breathing, teaching, preaching this way of life. And I've finally written my book that's about to be published. It's at the editors. Like, oh my fucking God. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. It's been huge. And even writing the book, I was like, you know, when I actually sat down to write it at the start of this year, I was like, there is no way that I actually could have written it before now. You know, like I said, I'd written so many books and I've got so many documents, but it was all just journal entries and this is happening in my life. Like, whereas this is like a real book and it's like 300 pages. Well, it's 80, 75,000 words. So that's a, that's a proper book. It's not like a skinny self-help book. <laughs> this is a real book. <laughs> And it's not really about my life story. There's parts of it in there as I explain things, but it's like, this is a real book. And I'm so fucking excited about it. It's such a big deal. But I was like, this is like 17 years. I was like, this 17 years, so whatever planet is the 17 year cycle. And I'm like, how significant? How significant on the eclipses, on the 18 month, you know, and I talk about a lot about the timelines. If you've, you know, listened to me before, you'll hear me talk about timelines all the time. Everybody knows like the three week, three weeks to break a cycle. So three weeks, you know, three months, three years. Um, I working with clients have found that there's like a the nine month healing cycle, then there's an 18 month point, you know, and it's like 18 months since the dog attack. And I was so devastated, mainly about the dog attack in essence of like, I was like, I'm going to write my book. I was about to start writing my books. I was about... I was all I could think about, right? And I went into this fucking dark, deep place like last year. It was so dark. And, you know, it's been really hard living out here in the country. And, you know, there's so many pieces to that. Like, I've tried to leave this property so many times, not able to leave. And if you caught my stories in the last 24 hours yesterday, like one of my cats had been missing for like, 
five, five days. And I didn't said anything on stories or anything like that because, you know, like sometimes I go for 24 hours, 48 hours. Like I always keep them in at nighttime, but occasionally one won't come back. And I was like, oh, fuck. anyway, the only reason I was freaking out so hard about Bear is because on Monday and Tuesday night last week, when he didn't come back on Monday, the wild dogs were like, like I say it and the packs of wild dogs, but unless you live in the country, unless you've had some experience growing up in the bush or something, you just don't get it. And I understand that. But if you can imagine a, a roaming pack of wild dogs, like running through your suburb, you'd fucking freak out. And the thing is, is that they roam at nighttime. And so it's like dead quiet out here at nighttime, right? And they wake you up and it sounds like they're outside the window, but they're like bolting past. They're up on the hill. They're howling. Like they're vicious. They're fucking vicious, man. And so, you know, those, those first two nights that Bear was missing, he didn't come back. The dogs were out and then he hadn't come back for five days. So I started going into like panic mode. I'm like, fucking dogs got him. And then like a neighboring property that Jack Russell got eaten by the wild pack. And I'm just like, <gasps> like I sort of reached my limit yesterday. And then we're like going through the eclipse and the full moon. And I'm just like, right, put it on my stories. I'm like, I don't think Bear's coming home. The Jack Russell got eaten. I was just, I was a fucking mess. And then like... I was like, he's gone. Like, and I was like, how am I supposed to only have eight cats, not nine? Like just the whole, the whole thing. Like, but I know, I know it reached that sort of tipping point for me, especially after the full moon and the three days of it, because like the wild dogs, like on, on the 18 month point since the dog attack that I almost died. And then 18 months later, the freaking wild dogs come through for two nights. Like, it was probably about a week that were roaming around. Like, it was just fucking crazy. But the energy has been insane. And, like, old patterns coming up, yeah, on these eclipses. We all know that on the, on the eclipses, the old patterns come up, you know. And it's like, oh, I'm doing my old things. And it's like, no, it's coming up. And do you know what? You're making a conscious choice to do it differently. You're not getting sucked in. And even if you do get sucked in, you pull yourself out pretty quickly. But if you know the, the whole thing about eclipses is it allows us to, to revisit things to see if we want to choose something different. Yeah, this is about taking your power back. And, and another thing, you know, there's so many things that I've been down in the biggest, deepest, darkest hole out here. And I've been pulling myself out the past few months and I wanted to do a live stream, but I'm just putting it all in this live stream together right now because I have been very quiet these last four months because I've been writing my book. <laughs> um, and I've just had to like push everything aside to get my book done, right? So I've really been focusing all my energy on that. So I haven't been live streaming very much. So this is like a life update. And I haven't been live streaming very much. Sure, I've been writing my book, but also I haven't wanted to. And it's really weird because like I've built my reality awareness online on live streams. I used to live stream all the time. I used to tell you everything all the time. I used to like share everything all the time. I used to get on live stream every day and talk about something, whatever was relevant. Like you guys know, like you've been to my self-help page, you've been to my website. Like there is just so much content on there, right? Because every day I was getting up and sharing and sharing and sharing. And that's how I built my business. That's how for I've been seven years online this year. And talking to you here is how I've done it. And the biggest part for me, which has been so, so huge, and I, I'd only sort of, I don't know, kicked in maybe the last month, maybe because it's when I finished my book and it was pretty much finished. I finished it and then I was like, I finished it, but it doesn't feel finished. And so I just left it for a week and then more stuff came through. And, and I realized, I'm like, uh, my life purpose is in transition right now. Like the way that I show up has changed, obviously. <laughs> you know, like every time I like go to do something and I'm like, oh, I just want to write my book. And so I have been and focusing on that. But in me now writing my book, my entire business structure has changed, which is like, it's way more supportive now because the thing that used to piss me off so much, and that's why I came on this live stream with such a strong boundary. <laughs> <laughs> because like getting on live stream the past, you know, bits and pieces, you know, in the past couple of months or whatever, 
And then there's like, they've gone viral, like, yay, grateful for that. But then there's like all these hate comments and you should turn to Jesus and Jesus is your answer. And I'm like, dude, if you're going to tell me what to do, my inner rebel's coming out and I'm like disappearing the other way. I'm like, go and start your own following. I'm like, do I look like I follow, follow Jesus? Like I have no qualms about Jesus. I love him. He's so compassionate. I call upon him often. Am I Christian? Do I follow that religion? No. Do I need to? No. Am I against people? People who don't know, but when you come to my page and gonna yell abuse at me, yeah, I'm gonna fucking say something, right? Boundaries, no, not tolerating that, not okay, <laughs> right? So there's so many like pieces to this, but the biggest thing and the title of this live stream is I surrender. I surrender. Because being out here was hard enough. You guys would have heard me talk if you followed me for a while. You know, it's like the driving's got me. Like I struggle going from living in suburbia to living in the country, like anyone does. It's a, it's a huge, it's a lifestyle change. It's a total different energy. There's no people, there's only nature and nature can be dangerous, okay? <laughs> like I was like, yeah, beautiful nature. And I was talking to dad last night because the wild dogs and bear hadn't come back. And I was just like, freaking wild dogs got him, dad. And I was like, what the fuck? And <laughs> having this conversation and I said, I said, it's hard living out here. It's so hard living on the land. Like it, I don't even run the property and it's so hard. Like, you know what I mean? It's just like, what the fuck? And like my friend as well, she's like, you know, and that's why country people are tough. Like they've got thick skin and they're built different. And I'm like, yeah, now I understand why. Cause you fucking have to be living out here. Like, you know, dad's like, yeah, you're in nature. And it was like a different like perspective on nature. Like we're like, yeah, beautiful nature, go outside and clear your energy and connect with nature. And I'm like, yeah, there's snakes and ticks and packs of wild dogs. And like, if you're in other countries, there's lions and tigers and bears and shit. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> you know, I was watching a, um, I don't know, whatever podcast thing on YouTube at some point in the last few months and Elon Musk, like, I was like, oh, what's this conversation about? And I listened for a bit. And he said something and I'm like, it's so true, you know, like, you know, everyone's in the city and he said something, I, I wanted to go back and re-listen. I was like, oh, how's the way he just worded that? Like the way he, you know, if we, if any of you have seen The 100 on Netflix, it's a really long series, only watch it if you're drawn to. I don't like sending people down rabbit holes, but there's certain things that show everything, everything does these days. But anyway, in the later episode, I think it was like the last season, right, of the 100. And it literally shows like where they create these cities out of like decimated land, basically. And people have taken a pill when they see this city. And it's like, well, isn't that kind of interesting? Like there's so many pills that people talk about, right, in these movies. But it was just interesting because like that always comes to mind. And then Elon Musk had said on this um podcast like you know people always want to live in a cabin in the bush but they don't last long there they always come back to civilization and I was like yeah I fucking understand that <laughs> you know yeah there's a certain breed of person that lives on the land and is able to like tolerate the driving like the driving is insane and that was the other thing about moving out here and trying to like how do I run my business and now a teenage daughter who wants to socialize and now we're having to drive and then it's like 45 minutes one way to anywhere. <laughs> so then it's like, get home is like, my creativity is not there. Like my creativity is there when I'm like at the beach, when I'm exercising, when I'm, you know, in my flow and I'm like, I've had to find a different flow. And for a long time, like I've been here for two and a half years now, for a long time out here, it was like, okay, you know, people, the smartest thing people say is like, oh, this is 45 minutes drive, just get up at four and drive to the beach. And I'm like, I was like, yeah, you should do that, Hannah. Like I've thought about it many times and I tried it for a while. And then I was like, you still get home at nine o'clock, half day's gone. And it's like, it's all well and good to go get a massage. It's all well and good to like go to the beach, but then you've got like the drive home, which is like an hour because you've got to get fuel because it's so far because you've got to travel with fuel because there's no fuel out here. <laughs> That sort of shit, right? I was like, this is not working for me. And I went through this biggest slump in like, what the fuck am I doing out here? Okay, move house. Okay, try move house. No. And it's like, you know, trying to apply for rentals. Got Is it because I'm a single mom? Is it because of my animals? Is it because I've, you know, got my business? Like, I didn't know what it was. So then I was like, okay, well, I'm just going to try it because it had been knocked back so many times about moving. And I was like, I'm just going to put no animals, right? Like the Hannah who doesn't lie because number one divine step in awakening your life purpose is honesty. 
right? But when you've been knocked back so many times, I was like, what is it? Like, what is it about my application? And I put in with even no animals and I still got knocked back. And I was like, well, you know what? This isn't fucking working. And I had to surrender. I was like, whatever, surrender, throw your hands up. You know that feeling? So the thing is, is people want to manifest their reality, right? They want to create things. They want to manifest. They want to do all these things. And yet a lot of people start on this journey and they hit a certain point and they give up. They're like, this is not working. Oh yeah, I did that for a while. And then I didn't do it anymore. And because whatever block they've hit is because we get to a certain point in our awakening. And this is writing into my second book that I've started already. Um, you know, like in the, in the stage of their awakening, right, people hit a wall or they hit a block or they'll hit a point where they're like, that's bad. Oh my God. Chemicals are bad for your food. You shouldn't be eating that. Should be drinking coffee. And they like switch like a dime, but then they'll like hate on that. You shouldn't be doing that. And then rah, rah, rah. And everyone's like, this is the way. (laughs) And I'm like, no, it's just a stage of awakening. And you're just at that point. Like, do you know what I mean? I've like witnessed it over this years. I've been doing this for 17 years, guys. I've seen so many people come, go, stop, come back, go, move, like all of these things, right? And I've started to witness all these cycles, these patterns, these walls that people hit up against, yeah? So when I get to this point of like surrender, I want to say that's like the true art to manifestation, but there's a true art in surrender because it's a real letting go. It is a giving up energy, It's a giving up energy, but it's different to like, well, I'm going to give up because then that's surrendering and I've let go. No, it doesn't work like that. Surrender is a full body feeling. But the thing that comes with surrender, the thing that you have to come into is acceptance of your present reality. If you cannot fully accept where you are, the only reason is, is because you're still carrying grief from the past of stuff that's been going on. and you haven't actually dealt with that. And so when a lot of people come into manifesting or their spiritual awakening or the journey and they're like, yeah, 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 this is good. But then they're like, ah, can't, like they physically can't sort of move any further or or anything, right? And so in that sense, it's like this place of, okay, well, this doesn't work anymore. Oh, this path's not for me. Oh, it's not working. Oh, my business didn't really take off. Oh, actually, I'm gonna take do this other thing. Oh, actually, you know, it's kind of like they just don't actually push through. They don't keep going. They give up. They literally give up. It's not, no, it's not. Oh, yeah, I did the spiritual stuff for a while, but, you know, and then you can tell they're disappointed because they're, like, talking about how their book wasn't successful, this wasn't successful, this wasn't successful. And I'm like, do you know the successful people, who they are? They're the people who continue going no matter if the thing they created is successful or not. They don't really care if it's successful or not. They, it is awesome. It's not awesome. I keep going anyway. That's the difference. That's the difference. This full body surrender, I learned when the dogs were ripping me apart. Out here, in the middle of nowhere, literally, like, this is my view right now. Can't really see it. Oh. That's literally the view. (laughs) That's like trees. That's nothing. For ages, I had to let go. When one dog had me by the finger, when the other dog had me by the leg, and I was literally being pulled in two, out in the middle of the paddock, screaming at the top of my lungs, also knowing nobody could hear me out here, there was a point where I was just screaming, help me please, and I just... I felt my whole body let go because it was just like that point of powerlessness, that point of absolute powerlessness. One could say it's helplessness, powerlessness, surrender. Do you know what it is really? It's letting go of control. It's letting go of control. I would say that the opposite of control is surrender. After the dog attack, it took me nine months to realize that I was in PTSD. Nine months of holding it together. I want to say I was in shock. I was in shock for nine months because 
we're out here, there's no one out here. At the time, the borders were still shut or something because my parent, my family couldn't come here. The floods were happening. It was flooding. The bridge nearly got swept away into floods. My only way off the property. Insane shit. Constant for months. Couldn't barely walk. Finger ruined. Like, it was a mess. And the thing is, is that people don't understand. People don't understand. And people won't understand. When I first moved out here, it hit me that I didn't want to talk about my toxic relationships and all my domestic violence history anymore. But then I was in this real like stuck lost point. I'm like, what the fuck do I even talk about? <laughs> and so I went from this shift from talking about all the DV, domestic violence, toxic, narcissistic ex stuff, blah, 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 constant, constant, constant. And then I hit this point. I'm like, I don't want to talk about this anymore. Like we reach our tolerance point. And then I was so lost for a period of time and I'm like, I do not know what to talk about. And then the dog attack happened. And then I was like, what the fuck's happening in my life? <laughs> All my resources were taken away. I couldn't like um, go to the beach. I couldn't do the things I love. Like, and when I say taken away, there is a time for self-care and looking after yourself and it keeps you sane and we get shit done and we live a life, blah, blah, blah. When those things get taken away, we're left and stripped bare to look at the things that even the self-care was covering up. In those moments, it's really understanding that there is stuff to face that you've been avoiding for a long time. Now, I also believe that there's a divine time. And what I mean by that is that in my book, I talk a lot about the timeline convergence points and these convergence points come around at specific times of our life where it's just time to deal with it. I teach this in trust intuition. It's constant. It's like it just lines up and it's there. The universe will often isolate you when you need it. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. And as if I wasn't isolated enough, like living estranged from family for freaking 15 years back then. And now it's 17 years, something, whatever, something like that. Long time, <laughs> long time. And being out here really woke me up. It's woken me up. The things that pulled me out of the space and the things that have really helped me is learning to love the place where I'm at. How many on this live stream right now can say you absolutely, with 100% devotion, 100% love your environment where you live? You're not happy, 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 but you're accepting of it. You're accepting happy. Sure, you might go moments of hating it. <laughs> You'd rather be somewhere else. But do can you truly say that you are happy and accepting 100% where you are right now? The things that I've needed to... You are... Okay, awesome. Awesome, awesome. The things that have really pulled me back to this space is creating my home as my home, even though I don't technically own it, but learning to love my space, my environment, and being very grounded with where I am. So even though the driving still pisses me off at times, but I'm pretty used to it now, I know how to plan my days and my times and, you know, I've, I've figured that out. Yeah, I can safely say that after two and a half years, I've got a handle on the driving doesn't mean that I love it, right? But I've worked it into the way that I live. But I've set my home up. It's a beautiful space. I've got lots of little beautiful spaces around. I do have a beautiful view, even though the snakes and the ticks and the wild dogs do send my nervous system into shock and freaking on overdrive at times, like 100% freaks out like at times, like for sure, right? I've started to understand how nature works, how I work, how I live out here, how <laughs> things work, right? And the thing is, is that in your home, like the things that used to ground me when I lived in civilization I was going for a walk in the neighborhood. I can't just go for a walk when I want to here. The weather has to be right. I have to wear my gum boots. I have to, like, do you know what I mean? So my Wellingtons, for those people who are not in Australia, we call them gum boots here. 
my big boots that's actually saved me from dying with a dog attack. The things that helped me ground, I don't have here. Going for a walk, going to the gym, being able to run to the gym, walking to the beach, running to the beach, going to a little cafe, getting a coffee, going, going and seeing a person rather than a cow. Like just like having like human contact, right? You know, like those things, I didn't realize they grounded me until I moved away from them, until the universe isolated me, right? And I was like, wow. And I really fell into a big black hole out here. But I've started to find that the things that pull me out are routine. Yeah, routine. Routine. Creating a space that I love. So I've set it up. I love it. I look at my surroundings and I'm like, I love my couch. I love this. I like, you know, it's got to be beautiful, right? Other things, like little things that ground me. When I had the garden, I just ripped the garden beds out recently. But gardening. Um, cleaning cupboards out. I know this sounds ridiculous, right? But if there's like a shelf in my pantry that's starting to get overloaded with too many teas or something, you know, if I'm cooking dinner and like, you know, in between cooking dinner, I'll just clean the shelf. Don't have to clean the whole fucking pantry, right? But just this little bit that's been annoying me and I'll pull it all out, wipe it down, throw some out. It's like, oh, it's that old. Okay, throw it out. You know, put it back, right? I'm like, oh, and every time we do that, it's a part of our soul. It's a part, like our environment is a place that reflects our soul. It reflects, reflect, reflects our current state of consciousness. And if we're hating on our environment, it's because we're hating in ourselves. Now that can come in a big point of like facing the pain of our past, okay? Because it'll reach a certain timeline convergence point where we, we are forced to face it, which is what's happened to me out here. Could I have faced it any other or like earlier point in my life? No. It's not like, oh, well, she was avoiding it or she should have looked deeper. It's like, it's, I don't, you know, there's a time and a place when you're avoiding on purpose. And then there's a time and a place where there's a timeline convergence point and it's just fucking time, right? There's a time and a place for push and hustle and, and create and like really get momentum going. And I do believe if, if you're starting a business, you fucking need to do that. Right, unless you're going to put a hundred thousand or a million dollars into paid advertising and get people to do the hustle for you, you want to be turning the fuck up and build your own business. Right? Show me someone who hasn't done that. Okay, show me someone who hasn't sacrificed the first few years of their business and their entire life to get their business growing in momentum. Right? You're either doing it or you're not. But these little pockets of grounding things really allow me to be present here right something as simple as i don't know putting the little shelf there and the candles and the little flower thing which i only did the other week right i was like oh just found somewhere for the candles that have been sitting in that room on the up shelf that didn't really fit there <laughs> i'm like now it's beautiful now i walk past and i'm like oh it's beautiful we have to remember that what we're seeing in our you know like you know when we're like looking for something and we're like where the fuck is it it's like and it's like right in front of us and we're like oh how do we not see that <laughs> Or we walk through town and we're like, how is that shop never, how did I never see that before? And they've been there for 10 years. <laughs> like, do you know what I mean? You know, we get this tunnel vision. And it's the same in our house, right? We, we like see so much with our subconscious and our peripheral, like all the time. And it's like, what are you absorbing with your peripheral vision all the time? Something else that has really helped me is making my bedroom beautiful. Now I know I've been talking about beautifying spaces, but making it cozy. So buying a good set of bed sheets, now it's turned to winterish here, autumn technically, um, like the flannel sheets, got my, I haven't put my electric blanket on yet, but bought a new quilt, good quality quilt, beautiful pillows, like just, and I'm like, I love getting into bed. The routine has really helped me heal. So even though my beach has been taken away, my walks have been taken away, being able to spend time in the sun because when I'm walking on the beach, like my feet are on the earth. So my earth, my earth thing is happening with the like grounding and the electromagnetic through my feet out here. Can't do that unless like the grass is good. And most of the time there's big prickles and, you know, bush stuff growing up in it. And it's been a thing right? But I've had to find other ways to nurture myself. I've had to find other routine things. And do you know what it is? It is a place where, um, Mooney, you're not going out. 
no cats are going out. They've like got it locked down. Cats are on lockdown. <laughs> no, they went out this morning. Um, <laughs> so my cat went missing for the past five days for those of you who've just missed it all. Um, so, so where was I? Oh yeah, the routine, right? And like making sure, because I'm up early anyway, right? I get up and you want to talk about building a business. It's kind of like, well, I'm up at 4.30 because I have clients from quarter past five in the morning. Now, not everyone will be willing to like, oh, no, I'm not doing that in my sleep and all my space. And I'm like, do you really want to build a business or do you not? <laughs> so in Australia, it's a really good time zone difference to have clients around the other side of the world at quarter past five in the morning. I, it could be five, but I chose quarter past just to give me that little extra piece. But it's like I had to find the routine. And so if I'm up that early, I make sure I'm in bed early. Does that mean I'm strict on the routine? 80% of the time, yes, because I've learned with my own routine. If I'm not in bed by 8 30, 9, 9 30, pushing it, 10, or pushing it, right? If I'm not in bed, starting to wind down with my little chamomile cup of tea or my herbal tea, whichever one I feel like, you know, definitely not a caffeinated one, but a like, you know, help me to, it's like my little routine, right? No blue screens, no screens like either a book or I just sit there and contemplate, look at the stars or, you know, I'll listen to like an inspirational like thing, but I'm not looking at the screen or, and or I'm meditating. Well, I usually meditate before then. It's like, I've had to find my routine. So I'm going to share with you because it's been really helpful and I've been helping clients with this too. And it's really shifted, but having a beautiful room to speak in, to speak in, to sleep in, maybe do speak in, to sleep in and cozy right? I saw someone's post not long ago and they said that actually having a really huge like bedroom, like really huge open spaces, high ceilings, really big is actually like, doesn't really work with our nervous system because like we're meant to be sleeping in tribes and in caves. Like we like that, you know, enclosed real space. And do you know what's so interesting? So this house has got technically six bedrooms. It's a big house. And um, obviously all different size bedrooms, right? And there's one room just here that's actually quite small. So um, just got like a queen bed in it and just enough room for a dresser in there. But that's it. And the thing is, is when I came out of hospital, out of all the beds and all the rooms, I had to sleep in there. And I was like, and I knew, and I just needed that, you know, I needed that enclosed space. It was so interesting. And then after a poor point of time after, I don't know, however long, months later or something, I moved into a slightly bigger bedroom that's got a beautiful view and well, they've got beautiful views here. And it was just interesting. It was like I was naturally learning to heal, but I had to create these beautiful spaces. And then the next thing came is the routine. And I'm talking like months in, you know, part, right? And it all happened overnight. I started to slowly implement this routine because I started having the clients in the early morning and I was like, well, you need to be in bed early. So now I have this space where I you know, I'll work, you know, from five, four, five in the morning up until lunchtime, depending on schedule, everything, every day is slightly different. Um, but it'll be like work till lunchtime or, you know, after if I have to go into town errands, but usually I like doing them on a different day. And then three and four in the afternoon, it's like animal time. They're all waking up. They've been sleeping all day. So we'll go for a, like just a little walk just out on the grass there or, um, you know, and I'll, play with them, clean them, water the garden if it needs it. Just, you know, just the little cleaning up bits um, and then making sure that I, um, <laughs> cats are talking. <laughs> um, then making sure that I'm like, you know, got to get dinner for myself and my daughter. So I make sure I'm in the kitchen by like 5.36. So the, the thing about a discipline routine is you must be conscious of time and the thing that most people don't understand enough is valuing their time and the piece about it is that a lot of spiritual people right for another part that's happened in this house is 17 years ago when I had my spiritual awakening and I was 21 and I learned about time and watches on your wrist are no good. And so I was like, okay, no watches. And I just went out of time. I was like, I'm not in time, no reality, like, you know, whatever. I'm like, uh -huh. I learned a lot over the 17 years. And so, and so I didn't have 
five o'clock. And when I started pulling myself out of the PTSD and out of the dog attack and wondering what happened, I actually wanted a clock. And I went to the local store and I bought a proper clock. You know, oh, I think I, I think we got it from Ikea. Anyway, <laughs> um, Ikea has been very helpful in setting up our house. It was really, really helpful in buying little bits of furniture to put in all the little nooks and crannies and bits we needed. Anyway, um, so okay, mission though, but anyway, <laughs> it's made it beautiful. So I bought a clock and it's in the kitchen and it fucking changed everything because it brings ideas, it brings spirituality, it brings airy fairy down to reality. And as a human being, we need to be able to function in reality. As a really highly sensitive empath, intuitive healer, psychic being who, you know, talks everything and feels everything, we have to ground that into our physical body and, and function in physical reality or we're just not going to, right? We're not going to be able to function if we don't bring that to reality. And a way to do that is being very conscious of time being very conscious of your time. So even when I have my days off, which is Thursdays and Sundays, so I don't do clients on Thursdays and Sundays, and that's also changed the way that I feel in my life, which is amazing. When I first built my business, I was working seven days a week and I wouldn't change that for the world because I needed to do that for the momentum to build and figure out what I was doing and now have structure and understand what my business is all about. Didn't know a piece of that when I began, right? Just was going the next step, the next step, as I always talk about. And now I have Thursdays and Sundays off, but even on my Thursdays and Sundays off, I'm still up at 4 a.m. 4, 5, right? Depending. 4, 5. 5 is like my thing, get up, but usually it's 4.30. So 4.30. And so in the afternoon, so I'll work in the mornings and then in the afternoon, it's like 3 to 4 in the afternoon, doing the animals, make sure I'm in the kitchen by 5.30. So like I said, I'm very conscious of time. I don't want to be cooking away in the kitchen for fucking hours and it's 10 o'clock and I've been distracting myself because I actually don't want to be in the kitchen that night. Or, ah, nah, we know how it feels sometimes, <laughs> right? So I'm very conscious of time. I'm like, right, 5.30, sort of 5.36, depending on the day, right? They do vary slightly, but I'm conscious of this strict time, right? 5.36, in the kitchen, sorting out dinners, doing clean up the kitchen, doing the nighttime routine, dinner, like sorting it out, right? I'm out of there by 7.30, 8 o'clock's pushing it, right? Because that's my wind down time. Now, depending on the day I've had, depending on the week, depending on the level of clients I've had, depending on the level of driving I've done, because sometimes there's a fuckload of driving in a week and I'm over it, right? After dinner, it's my wind down time. That means that I'm either meditating or I'm watching Netflix or something. And I'm flicking between the two, okay? Notice it's not a strict routine. For me, getting up and meditating for an hour every morning was amazing for me in 2006 when I was really getting into my spiritual practices. I, did, I wasn't a mother then. I didn't have a business then. <laughs> I was really free-flowing then. So life was different then. And part of me pulling myself out of my big black hole was where's happy Hannah gone? Where's Hannah who is so high on life? Where is Hannah who loves her life, who loves this way of life, who, who's the happiest positive person that anybody knows when she walks into a room? Where the fuck is she gone? And it started to make me think back to these, piece, these pieces of myself that I've lost along the way because I've been in abusive relationships, because I've let myself go back to abusive relationships, because I've been in toxic relationships, because I've been a toxic person, because I fucking hated my life to that point. Like, you know, like life happens. As you've heard, it's what we do about it, right? It's about how we pull ourselves back out of it. And do you know what it's been over the last 18 months? little tiny pieces at a time. All of this did not happen overnight. This happened over 18 months, right? Of pulling myself back out, of creating beautiful spaces. That took time in itself. And then finding a way to find a routine. So depending on where I'm at in my cycle, where I'm at, if I'm watching Netflix at night, I've got a time limit. If I'm meditating, there's a time limit, right? So I'm still conscious of time. If I for whatever reason, distract myself and go into a Netflix binge. It doesn't really happen anymore. But in the start, sometimes it did. Okay. So when you're starting a discipline routine, be okay with boundaries being crossed within yourself. And then over a period of time, if you're committing to this routine, okay, so mine's like 4am and then in bed by 8.30, 9, right? 
sometimes those hours don't work for people. So maybe it's 7 a.m. for you and then in bed by 10. I don't know. Pick your hours, right? I love getting up in the early in the morning because I can get so much done and then I've got the whole day. You know, if I have like a few clients in the morning, I can do the rest of my clients on Telegram and then I've got the whole day. Like I just get so much more done. So I love the mornings. But when I was first creating my business, it didn't work like that. My daughter was younger. She was up in the mornings. Um, you know, we had to go to like, you know, homeschool events and that sort of thing, surfing moms, all the things you do when you're in civilization. And I worked up until 2 a.m. in the mornings, right? So I was a night owl at that point and I was getting up later. So I'd make sure I'd sleep until 8 or something, right? So pick your time, but stick to it, right? And it might take a little bit to get into this, but it's going to find a way for you. You'll find your rhythm. You'll find your flow. If, you know, for some reason, you know, I, in the early days I'd have a Netflix binge and it'd be like midnight and then like, I'd be shit because I'd have to get up at four and then I'll be like, Oh no, I'm not doing that. <laughs> like, you know, and you, you start to crave your routine because you know how it supports you. You know how it makes you feel and you do start to feel good because the thing that I realized from living in civilization and living out here and all my resources taken away is that my confidence was taken away because the things that made me feel good on the outside were no longer available. Self-care is an outside thing. Um, going to the gym is an outside thing. Going to the beach is an outside thing. What's done being out here is I've had to flip it around to the inside. My house at my old place, I never really loved. It was empty, didn't have furniture that I loved, didn't do that. And it's like it's flipped around. I've had to do the inside. It's kind of interesting, right? I've had to learn to love myself. I've had to learn to love who I am. And that hasn't come with facing a huge chunk of pain of all the abuse, of all the rejection of my family, of all the stuff over the last few years that got to a tipping point that I didn't realize how much I'd shut down because of all those hurts and pains. Here I am doing what I love. Happy Hannah loves her life. And then everyone starts dropping off and like, you know, disappearing from my life and telling me I'm crazy and all that. Like that fucking affected me. It fucking affected me. It broke my fucking heart. Family rejecting me, telling me that not to do this shit and what are you doing? And, you know, like it fucking, it fucking broke me. It broke me so bad. And it's taken me a long time to recover from that long time to recover from that but I'm finally starting to feel the love inside of myself and that's come from disciplined routine again I'm not strict on it right in the mornings I am though like I, I'm really make sure I'm up even on my days off because I get so much more done and if I'm really tired if I for whatever reason I'm coming into my cycle and bleeding or I've done lots of driving and I am really tired I'm still up I still get a lot done but I'll have an afternoon nap Right. So again, it's working your flow, but I encourage you to stick to your timed, disciplined routines. My meditation is usually still my meditation before bed. And I was just speaking with a client. And sometimes if we're doing, if you're having trouble sleeping, make sure you're not looking at screens before bed. Make sure you have a disciplined routine morning and night. OK, um, you know, and um, if you are meditating before bed, and you're not able to sleep, make sure it's a still mind meditation, guided meditations, the crown chakra is like, oh, we're connected and we're going on journeys and I'm not sleeping now, <laughs> right? And if you've got any problems, write them down on paper, deal with them in the 4am in the morning when you do your emails, don't look at emails, like, do you know what I mean? Set some boundaries with yourself. Your time is sacred, right? And we're so busy in the day, we don't have time for ourselves. So you're going to make time with these little routines that really support you and it anchors in reality, okay? There's a lot of things where when a person wakes up and they're like, oh, nine to five main mainstream, get me out of this crappy world. Like, oh my God, we're not supposed to live like this. We're supposed to live in tribes on the land and oh my God, we're not supposed to let me go to a cave in the bush. Like, pff, like reality check, you know, like we do live in civilization and we do need to like, you know, come down into reality, like, you know, and this is the biggest thing where so many people come into spirituality, but then they're off with the fairies and they don't know how to ground that into reality where we live. Like we actually live here. We need to function here. When we're conscious of our time and sticking to these boundaries, and like I said, it's not about beating yourself up because you missed your 3 a.m. get up or something, <laughs> 4 a.m. get up, like, no. Right? It's just that the next morning you're going to make sure you actually get up. Yeah? Okay. 
what else did I want to show up? Before I go through the comments, I'll, um, I did have a bit of a list to just make sure I'd copy, cover a few things. So, okay, one last thing I want to share with you that's been really, really profound is removing words from my vocabulary. Removing words from my vocabulary. I can barely say it. <laughs> Definitely, I can't. Now, a little bit of a contradictory thing what I'm about to say here, so hear me out. It's been challenging living out here, right? If you guys caught my earlier live streams from when I first moved here, really, there probably was a lot of like um, <laughs> negativity in a way of like, I can't do this. I can't do the driving. Like there was times I was, and I just didn't, I didn't understand it back then. I didn't understand being taken away from civilization. I hadn't faced the pain of what wasn't conscious to me yet, but was buried under the self-care stuff like we talked about. Right. And it was like, I can't live here anymore. I can't do this. I fucking hate it out here. Like, and there's times where I still say that. Okay, because I'm all for feeling your real feelings because it's so fucking important. But there's a time and a place where it gets to a point where voicing the continual negativity about what you hate is not conducive to changing it. There comes to a tipping point. Now, that does not mean that you never say you don't like something. Okay, because that's really getting you clear on what you do like. All right. But at the same time, it's so important because um, instead of saying I can't, I say I choose. Something that has shifted me like no tomorrow is I can't do this anymore, is I'm choosing to not do this anymore. I can't be happy in this place. Like I, d I can't. My happiness is not here. My happiness is at the beach. Like I can't do this anymore. And it's like, no, I'm choosing to not do this anymore. I can't live here anymore. I'm choosing not to live here anymore. Like anytime you feel frustrated or angry or upset or anything like that, I'm choosing this. I fucking hate my job. Well, I'm choosing to be here actually. I fucking hate this relationship. It's draining me. It's making me negative. It's making, I don't like being in this space. Actually, were well, you choosing to be there right now? Because the reality is, is where I live, like, you know, in essence of like, I can't move. I can't move house. Like, I don't like it out here. It's not good for my health. So many bad things have happened out here, right? I I've tried to move house. I've tried to, you know, like the amount of rentals that I've applied, not even like in Sydney, like Gold Coast, Brisbane, like just like get me out of here, <laughs> right? Block, 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 block. No, 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 no. Like, what the fuck? Okay. I've got no animals still block, block, block. And I'm like, what the fuck? right? What's really important about this that really started shifting me? I actually choose to stay living here. Because the reality is, is that I could pick up and move if I wanted to. I literally could pack up my entire house, put it in the storage shed, somehow figure out to take all the cats and the dogs in our station wagon and get on the road and go on a road trip. Because I've done that before. I did that in 2020 and I packed up our entire house and I was like, I'm not staying here for lockdown. We're out of here. And I put all the animals and my daughter in the car and off we went to just see where we ended up. <laughs> right? I did that for five months on the road during COVID because I wasn't going to be locked out in my suburb. Right? Just wasn't. Whatever. Hardest thing I ever did. Best thing I ever did. Fucking like learn so much. Blah, blah, blah ended up here. Now, the thing is, is that in this, like, I'm sick of the driving. I can't do this anymore. My mental health, like all the things. And they're really real, valid feelings that 
pull me down into tears. Usually when I am about to bleed is when it'll sort of surface again, which is a way of grieving by the way, and it should be worked with. And I talk about this in my next upcoming book, the way we actually heal. And it's so important to work with these cycles, right? And let yourself feel the feelings. But what's so important and what started, what started pulling me out from unconscious negativity to conscious negativity is actually the fact, well, actually, Hannah, you're choosing to stay here. Because you, you, it's not that you can't stay here. You're choosing it. Because there is actually nothing stopping me from putting all my stuff in a storage shed and getting on the road again. And I'm like, ugh, I actually don't want to do that. So I'm choosing to stay in this house. I'm choosing to stay on this property. Sure, I'm getting knocked back by rental and this and that. And then all these freaking house situations, which is definitely now another live stream now. I've been talking for however long now. That... I'm choosing to stay in this house. I'm choosing to stay in this rental property. I'm choosing to stay on this property. Doesn't mean that I'm happy. Doesn't mean that I love it. Doesn't mean that I love living here and I've found my dream. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> no, it doesn't mean that. It means that I'm taking my power back because I'm consciously choosing to stay because I could choose to get in the car and drive. So I, I have options, right? I'm really sure that if I really rang my dad and said, dad, I can't live here anymore. I need to stay with you for a while. I'm sure he'd be like, no worries. Like I've technically got options. So saying that I can't move anywhere, or I'm stuck here is actually bullshit. It's actually a lie. It's actually pointless negativity that has absolutely no reason, rhyme or purpose other than the fact that you're fucking feeding yourself a pile of negativity and keeping yourself stuck. The moment that I started saying, I'm actually choosing to stay here because those options, this is the better option, right? Again, doesn't mean that I'm happy. Doesn't mean that I love it. Doesn't ma It means that I'm choosing to face this current reality as it is. And I'm choosing to be with what I have. And when I started to say, I'm actually choosing to stay here, I'm choosing to be in this, I actually started seeing things differently. Instead of hating on the environment, I'm like, actually, I freaking love my couch. I love the way I've set my house up. I love my animals. I love that they're affectionate to me. I love that when we can go for a walk, it, it's actually nice and I do enjoy it. You know, like, it, instead of like, I hate, I can't, I, eh, oh, I am choosing this huge power shift. And do you know what the hardest thing is, right? Cause I've worked with several clients on this recently and you know, something that I shifted myself and then it seems my clients, you know, shift with me, right? Is that sometimes it's really hard to say that you choose in the start. I can't be happy. I can't, I can't do this anymore. I can't actually voice it for me. I choose to not be happy. Wow. It's a big one. I'm choosing to not be, I'm choosing to hate on this. Oof. Right. I don't fucking want to do the washing. I don't want to do the dishes. I can't. Well, actually I'm choosing to do it right now because I could choose to just go to bed and leave it for tomorrow. So there's no point in complaining about it when you're actually choosing to do it because technically no one's forcing you to do dishes before bed. You could actually just go to bed, but then you won't sleep because you know you really want to do the dishes actually because it makes your day start better. Oh, okay, yeah, I'm choosing it. So what am I complaining about? Oh. It actually also brings us back to the present moment. And when we're in the present moment, all the solutions exist to our problems. When we're in the negativity, we'll just find more problems. But when we start to say, I choose, I'm choosing this, I'm actually choosing this. Do you know what that is? It's empowering. It's trusting your intuition because your intuition knows that you need to do certain things, but we don't always want to do what our intuition tells us to do. Do we? <laughs> right? Like we know that it's going to be good for us to get up and keep to our routine or to exercise or to do the things that you do, right? I'm just sharing what I was doing, but you, you'll find your own things because you know what is good for you in this point and stage in your life right now, okay? Right? 
And even if you don't know, now you're listening to this, you'll go off and you'll find certain things. You'll be like, oh, I actually love this little thing or something, right? I'm going to pull that into my routine. And so really coming into a place of I choose is where your power is. And all the solutions are. When you start shifting out of this, there might be a fuckload of grief that you haven't felt yet. That's the only reason we stay in negativity. It's the only reason someone repeats their story over and over and over again is because they're, number one, nobody's really heard them. Nobody's able to listen to them or hold space for them because it's actually probably really heavy for people. People, well, Not everyone's a counsellor, right? That's um, so what counsellors are for. Healers are for. So only certain counsellors can hold a certain space too, by the way. Um, and they haven't cried about it. It's the only reason someone will repetitively repeat their story. But when they have started grieving and they are willing to change, then that's where the shifts start. And especially when we start realizing that we're the ones choosing the negativity, game changer. <laughs> like, I'm not a negative person, but I'm actually going to fucking complain about everything in my life right now. <laughs> really? How does that work for you? But it comes with the pain of facing what we haven't liked and all the pain that's built up over the years from all the people that fucking rejected us and hurt us and abandoned us and did this and blah, 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 blah. Life starts out wonderful, mostly. <laughs> and it just gets layers and layers and layers because we're just going along because society just keeps pushing us along. We don't get a chance to stop. But when we pull our own routine in and we're disciplined on our own routine, that's when we get to take our power back and actually start to play with reality. We get to choose. Oh, I don't actually want to do this dinner day. I don't want to do that. What the fuck did you say? Yes. Nobody's making you cancel it. You'll find your energy comes back. You'll feel lighter. You'll be happier. Oh, what? Because you chose. Oh, my God. <laughs> Game changer. I choose. I'm choosing this. And even if you're like, yeah, I'm choosing to be unhappy right now. I'm choosing to stay in the negativity right now. Like, be okay with it. <laughs> like I said, it's not about slapping positivity over. Mm -mm. Okay, there's a time and a place for heavy grieving and healing and doing all the spiritual work. But it comes to a point when you've done a ton of that, that it gets to a point where it's actually time to choose and do something different. There's a reason, there's a point, right? There's, there's a place of healing deep trauma and then you have to choose to change your mind. But if you're trying to change your mind and you haven't healed the trauma, the trauma will win every time. Yeah, there's a time and a place for everything. It's not... They're wrong now because they still eat meat and they're still keep taking chemical stuff. And uh, like, there's no wrong or right. It's all stages of awakening and all stages of healing. And we're all in different stages at every given time, at every given place. And at there, but you get the point, right? There's no one strict rule, line, and rhyme for every single person on the planet. That just isn't. It just isn't. We're multifaceted for a reason. I don't know what that is, but you get the point. Okay. I thought there was something else that I had to talk about, but I I think I'm I think I've covered everything I wanted to talk about with the surrender. The surrender. Okay, this is the last thing. Okay, cool. <laughs> thought there was one more thing. Starting to choose and surrendering to where I am right now. Okay. And that waves. Okay. Like I said, sometimes I'm like, I'm actually happy here. My daughter's like, no, you're not. You were crying last week about it. And I was like, oh yeah, I was tired. I was about to bleed. I'm like, but actually I found happiness in a place I never thought I would. Why? Because of all the things we've been talking about in this live stream, right? And probably more that I've forgotten about. Coming into the moment and starting to choose, I'm choosing this this is my life now. I'm choosing this. Is it the life that I thought I was going to be living? No. Is it the life that I want to be living? No. There's definitely things I want to improve on. I miss the beach, blah, blah, blah. But right now I'm choosing to be where I am. I'm choosing to fully accept it. I'm choosing to do what the next thing my intuition is guiding to do, which, oh my God, my book's at the editor and I'm so excited about the release of it, guys. It's coming. It's coming. Um, 
so I'm really excited about that. Um, you know, like, but I'm coming into a place of surrendering to where I am right now. I'm finding my happiness because of that and everything we talked about on this live stream. And in that place, right, you know, like it was really good. And then in the last like six weeks, all these plans that I'm like, cool, this is what we're doing, like house wise, future six months wise, everything just fucking got stripped away from me again. Like no shit. I know. Like I'm laughing about it now, but fuck, I wasn't a couple weeks ago. I, I was just like, what the fuck am I like? What, what, what am I supposed to do? Like it was insane. I'm like, wow, all my well thought out, laid out plans that have like pulled me out of my dark hole totally got ripped away. And I have had to surrender again on another level 18 months later, which is an 18 month timeline point. There's, you know, nine and then 18 months. And I'm like, the surrender has been the same. Come, like at the same of the dog attack, like I've literally had to let go of any plans that I have about where I'll be living in six months about, you know, I was like, it's all right, Hannah, last solution is we're going to get on the road again, which I don't, you know, as I was spoken about, I don't want to do again because with nine cats, it's going to be a mission and it's coming into summer here. I'm like, it's not the best time to road trip winter is. And it's like, you know, in Australia anyway, um, you know, and it's like, I was like, okay, well, that's not really even going to work either. And I'm like, okay, well, I just have to surrender it. Like, I can't, that's like, you know, it's like all these things got pulled out again. And it's so interesting because like, you know, and some people would look at this as though like, oh, well, things start, just start to get good. And then it all falls to shit again. And I'm like, no, that's a, that's a mindset. And a, like, I want to say a mainstream way of thinking the way that I'm looking at it, especially as I'm learning to embody surrender on such a deep level these days because of everything, um, is, you know, as much as I broke down and cried and howled and I was like, I can't believe that this has just happened and this is happening and I absolutely have no plan to work with. And after I grieved it, like dropping into those heavy grief cries that I always talk about, right? After I fully dropped into that, my magic started to come back. I was like, Hannah, when have you ever worked with normal society rules on creating your life? What? I was like, <laughs> do you actually know what happened when, when I dropped in through the grief and I was driving home and <laughs> one of the happy hardcore songs, like I used to be a happy hardcore raver in Brisbane, like back in the day when I was 17, 18, 19, like those were the days, man. Like, I was so happy. <laughs> not underneath but I was happy I was happy hardcore raving high on all the things that make me high and the music and all the things like happy hardcore raver I fucking loved my life my life revolved around raves back then I knew what time of year it was because of what rave was on what festival was on and I was like front row you know nosebleed section all the <laughs> anyway when I was driving home when this happened just the other week and like all my plans got ripped out from underneath me, a happy hardcore song came in and I hadn't, haven't listened to that for years. Right. And it was like, we don't play by the rules. I still haven't listened to it. I was thinking about it. I think it's like Scott Brown or something. Um, it's like, we don't play by the rules. And I'm like, so I can hear, I'm like, okay, I need to listen to the song again. <laughs> but it was like, oh, it's like, Hannah, when have you ever, done anything in your life that is normal <laughs> I was like oh here I am trying to be like a mainstream person there's nothing wrong with mainstream people but <laughs> in a way of like like all the manifesting techniques is how I've always created my life trying to fit that into societal tick this box do this way write this way do this I've never fucking lived like that and the last few weeks and pulling myself out of like you know in the last few months actually getting my life back on track after last year it's like I was like oh you know and so I've had to drop into surrender and, and what's come through for me is the magic that I had when I first was spiritually awakened. And that's what I've been looking for. And it just so happens that whatever 17 year astrological cycle, I'm like, wow, this is what happened 
17 years ago when I had my first spiritual awakening. So one person, so you could say, and I have said over the years that you have many layers of your spiritual awakening, like you'll go through these death rebirth points. And as I was speaking earlier in the live stream, that people do the spiritual work and then they hit these walls and I'm like, they're hitting a spiritual awakening point. If they're not going to walk through it, they will sort of not go off path, but they won't live their true life purpose of what they were called to do. Like they start it and then they're like, oh, it wasn't successful or it didn't do this or it didn't. And I'm like, dude, like you just, you just like spiritual awakening point, like hello, like version 2.0, version 3.0, like, you know, are you gonna, are you gonna upgrade this or are you just gonna, it's too hard. Nah, I'm blocked, not meant to do it. And hey, some people weren't meant to do it this lifetime. Plain and simple, no judgment. It is what it is. But I was like, my magic's come back. My liveness has come back. And I'll tell you what, as soon as my book was finished, I was tested. I was fucking tested. As soon as my book was finished, I was tested dangling carrots in front of me. And I'm like, this is like, and I knew it straight away. I was like, this is a true integration of a shadow happening for me right now with people that turned up in my life. And I was like, and I knew it. And then I sort of went into like forgetting about that. And I was like, got fully tested. So when we're about to break through, we'll be tested dangling carrots take you off path this looks better oh that's too hard like do you know what I mean I was like whoa no distractions I'm breaking through this like pivotal point in my life and it was so amazing because I was like even though I went through a bit of doubt I'm like oh my god Hannah you just chose yourself you were just tested like you were three years ago on the eclipse 18 months ago on the eclipse and this time you've chosen yourself and I feel so happy because I did now, of course, when Bear was missing the last few days, I fucking was in a panic attack. <laughs> PTSD, like dogs, all the shit, but I knew it had to clear out grief, whatever. Bear came back. Thank fuck. So grateful. Oh, my God. Because I was just feeling good. I was like, my book, all this, just chose myself, but this last eclipse, like just the other day, and it's like everyone can feel that shift already. It's like, oh, my gosh, I've made it. Fuck, we got through that. Feel normal again. What the fuck was that? <laughs> right? So, okay. So I hope this live stream has helped you. I'm going to go through the comments now because those of you who have been listening, um, yeah, I really wanted to share this personal share. I've been quiet. I've been processing. I've been fucking healing. I've been finding the love for my life and my myself again. And it's back. And I'm like, wow, what a place to be in. And I'm so fucking excited about my book coming out for you guys. Oh my God. Oh my God. So if you want to work one-on-one -on -one with me, I've got a few things open at the moment and then I'm going to explain these and then I'm going to go through these um, uh, comments here because I really want to speak to them. They're really important. I was just in a flow, so that's why I didn't really say too much as I was going in, in comment-wise. So, uh, okay. So there's a few options to work with me one-on-one -on -one, and it's so interesting. Talk about the trust, right? Little side note again. You know how like the USA has been on like COVID border lockdown. So if you were unvaccinated, you still couldn't get into the USA. And I think it must've been about two or three weeks ago. Um, and I was getting the message to release your, um, to release healing with Hannah, which is my in-person. So the thing is I haven't been doing many live streams, but I've been working with clients. I've been writing my book and I've been loving my life again and living my life again. And my, um, you know, I, I did my first in-person client for the first time in seven years because I was like, build my business online. It's always the plan, build online and then start doing in-person stuff again. And I was like, wow, like my career is transitioning. And that's what I was talking about before. My life purpose has transitioned from being live stream, live stream, online, online, online to like starting to come back into, you know, in-person things again. So I'm so excited about that because I've already done one in-person day um, with a long-term client. She's booked four of them over the over the session. And so Healing with Hannah is my nine-month, it's a specific nine-month container. So you're working with me one-on-one -on -one video calls if you need them, um, but in-person days as well. So there's four days over the nine months where I fly to anywhere around the world to meet you or we meet somewhere in the world or if you're local, obviously we meet here. So the Healing with Hannah, nine months, four in-person days where we catch up, do whatever is required in those days. They can look very different. We, we discuss that, what is required for you personally. They can be spread out or we do them all in a month or we work it out. So 
what's so interesting is when I was sharing with my daughter about it, because I'd have to organize for her to be cared for and the animals and whatever, if I was to go off and do that. And so I was speaking to her about it. She's like, well, what about like the USA? Like you won't be able to get in there. And I was like, oh, well, you know, I just, I was like, well, we'd meet somewhere in the world where we both can, or, you know, magically the borders are going to open. And then I saw something like literally like, I don't know, yesterday or the day before or a couple of days ago that like they just opened it again. And I'm like, talk about trust. <laughs> talk about trusting your intuition, right? I'm like, you've been guided with these things. And, you know, even when it doesn't make logical sense and I'm like, then the borders open. Cool. And it's so interesting because just like, I don't know, last month or something, they like re-signed it so that it stayed closed. And I was like, oh, well, I'm still going to release it because I'm feeling to. And then they just opened it. And I'm like, there's trust. Um, yes, we're definitely going to meet Alina. Alina is a long-term client um, for sure. So now the USA borders open. There we go. <laughs> See, magic happens when you follow your intuition, right? And this is the thing where I was like, I needed that magic back. And I'm like, oh my God, it's back. And, and that whole thing of like the, just the other week when, you know, like there was all stripped away from me again and I couldn't do the mainstream way of creating my life. I was like after the hugest cry because like it's the biggest thing when something gets ripped away from you, right? I'm sure everyone's felt that at some point in their life. And I had to drop into trust, but I was like, oh my God, when have you ever, we don't play by the rules. <laughs> It's like, oh, how did you forget? I'm like, oh my God, this is where the magic is. This is where the trust is. This is where the aliveness is. This is where life is. So fucking exciting. So exciting. Um, so I love this. I love it. I love it. Love it. Um, so there's healing with Hannah or there's Life Purpose Accelerator. Life Purpose Accelerator will be closing soon. It is my 12 month program. It's the inner circle access. So you get all my courses, all the things um to do like 12 months and it is life purpose accelerated so we're literally accelerating your purpose in this space healing does happen in the space because when you step on your purpose all the things that are not your purpose will surface and to show you like to thread through to come back to you to shine your purpose in the world so life purpose accelerator is open as well so if you would like information about any of these, just send me a message or I'll pop the link for Life Purpose Accelerator in as well. Um, if I can find it, I forgot to get them out. And there's something else. Oh, yes, Phoenix. Phoenix is my three month portal that came through um, actually last, I don't know, two weeks ago, or something like that. I released Phoenix and Phoenix is that real like dedicated to self. Like this is you saying yes to you and no to the nagging carrots. This is you being able to have the strength, the self-love to find yourself, to come back to that place where you are the center of attention, where you are put first, where you are the boundaries, where you, you know, and, and I think that a lot of people that are coming out of domestic violence or traumatic situations or have struggled to put themselves first, struggle to not get distracted by the dangling carrots, struggle to continue to follow their purpose even when like they know they need to do it and they are but they're not fully there with it because they don't fully commit to themselves they don't know that deep inside self phoenix is about that rising up and being at the forefront so that's three months healing with hannah is nine months and then life of us accelerator is 12 months so i've got all the things open at the moment for some reason well not all the things <laughs> those things are open so I'm going to pop life of accelerator in and then if you want to just get on the phone with me for 30 minutes there is psychic readings as well so they are available as well because they're important they're so important all right so I'm going to pop the link in for life of accelerator and I'm going to go through your comments because there were some really good cool ones but I was just in flow and I had to Fully drop into that okay let me see here my book I know um yes 18 months ago since my dog attack I know it's gone fucking fast right it's gone fast and slow at the whole same time oh <laughs> uh, yes you will buy my book thank you yes it should be released soon and I think there's a process so it'll come out on kindle and then it'll be hard copy but I'll tell you all about it because it's at the editor at the moment I'm just so excited about it and I'm so excited, like, and I just kept writing and writing and writing. And then like a thing of finished and there's another chapter and then the chapter came out and that's a whole other book. And then I'm like, oh, it's finished. No, no, 
oh my God, it was an amazing process, but it ended up being a 75,000 word book, which is about 300 pages, which is a decent fucking book. So it's like a proper book. <laughs> I'm so excited about it. So excited about it. Okay. So I was asking you guys if you actually fully can say, yes, I love my place. I love my environment. I love where I am. I love this, like, I love this place in my life right now. Um, Kristen was like, I think I can at least close. Dawn was a straight no. So good for honesty. Like, and just being clear where you're at, because if you're not clear where you're at, and even if you lie where you're at, like, yeah, like you can't really start. <laughs> it's okay to say no. Um, so yes, yes, there was lots of I am, 95%, awesome, so awesome for this clarity, love my home, yes, so special, and do you know, like, I think I need to do a whole nother live stream, I know I'll be talking about it in my book a lot, because so many people are displaced because they don't have a home, and that, you know, stems from so many childhood trauma stuff, so huge, even learning to love the home we're in comes from that, so I love hearing that you love your home, Duan. Um... I feel that today I have my own flat um, and no, and money is better today. Yes, awesome. Yes, feel that today. So good. Gayanne says not 100%. Scott's working on it. Awesome. Yeah, so awesome to be able to check in with yourself with that. And sometimes when I'm like, oh, and it's so interesting, like when I'm like, okay, I need to move, I need to move. <laughs> sometimes I need to like clean my house. <laughs> And when I do that and I've learned and I've caught myself on that, right? If I need to get out of the house, I'm like, actually the house needs to clean. <laughs> so sometimes I do go get out of the house, but then I'm like, and I clean my house and then I'm like, oh, I feel better now. So it's so interesting learning this. Yeah. Um, so Lu Lucian says, I cleaned my flat today. I know my journey brought me back to you. Uh, awesome. Yeah. It just makes such a difference when we clean. Yeah. Um, and just even the little things that are annoying us, like some, you know, and, and I think sometimes we could put it off because like, oh, I'm going to clean the whole house. Sure. We can get a cleaner, like hundred percent. And if you can, and you love it, awesome. I struggle having a cleaner because I like to clean in my own flow. That's not like every day on a Friday or every second week on a Thursday. Like, it doesn't work for me. <laughs> I'm not good with structure and routine in essence of like people in my space. Like I like to choose my own space of, you know, things. So yeah, that didn't didn't work for me maybe in the future it will but just no nah, i'm good with cleaning my house it grounds me out here cleaning my house grounds me so it's really important for me i've learned so it's really interesting um diane said i so appreciate your video today i've seen your videos on and off but today you are talking right to where i've been my whole life Ah, oh, so amazing it's like listening to myself i love it but with great consciousness today thank you oh i feel touched hearing that that's so awesome yay yeah, yeah, yeah. Scott says, do or do not, there is no try. <laughs> yes, I love that too. Removing the can'ts, removing words from the vocabulary. Like I said, doesn't mean that we don't like, that we love it and we're all of a sudden happy. This isn't about stopping positivity. It's about stopping giving power, right? Power. And I say this in my book that's at the editor. What did I say? It's like, oh, I can't even remember now. <laughs> um, it was something like, no, I'm not going to be able to remember what I wrote in this second in time. Um, but when we give, like we can think thoughts, but the power comes with ah, the sound, the voice, right? And so when we're constantly saying this, it's like constantly giving it so much energy and power. But when we stop voicing it, we can still think it. And then when we're in the purging, like still needing to cry or those waves that I talk about, it's really important to like, you know, get it out for sure, but don't, don't give it all the time. Like catch yourself and I'm consciously choosing to be negative right now. <laughs> it makes us stop <laughs> most of the time. Meditate if you fall asleep. Yeah, awesome way to put yourself to sleep. Um, Brent says, absolutely, with a spiritual woman beside you. Um, yeah, it's my cats. Thank you. Check in all these comments here. Uh, Diane says, this video has to be one of the best, most helpful videos I've listened to in years. Oh, thank you. For me, it's about, um, isness and truth of my own life, my own space. It's helped me to understand myself just a little bit more than I did a few hours ago. I freaking love that. I love that so much. I love that so much. And I think that's something that, you know, and it's so interesting because this whole house thing and what we've talked about on this live stream, 
That is something that I've absolutely fucking loved when I first had my spiritual awakening and I forgot about it. Isn't that so interesting? And I think just, you know, over the years with the amount of times I've moved, being away from family. Um, but I think once I, my daughter came, it, it was sort of like I had to let go of all these things, like these lessons we learn along the way, right? right? learn along the way because it did become a controlling factor and then once you have a child well you can't keep things clean all the time <laughs> like you know what I mean so I had to learn to let go of control about that but now she's 14 she's like mom this is a mess or like I'm like okay let's clean that out or whatever um so yeah it's really interesting right like the things that we do so naturally and the things we love and then like we sort of forget about them and then when we come back to them, yeah, it's, it can be really, really healing, really healing. There's so many reasons why we stop things that we love and then, then when we remember and come back to them, it can be one of the most profound healing things ever, right? Um, yeah, awesome for receiving money for doing what you do. So important for being who you are best way well, there's lots of best ways but it's an awesome way um, Nicole says I did the same thing for years feeling stuck never sunk in to switch up my thoughts until my kids started vocalizing it also <laughs> the awesome reflection the kids are like uh, all the things spiraling downhill now we've changed it up every time we don't want to be stuck here we say what we are grateful for within honestly it can change so much and as I said I'm all for like purging getting emotions out but then also like flicking the switch and consciously choosing, you know, it's, it's a big deal. Yeah. I love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Oh, thanks, Chris. Saying I'm amazing. Received that. Christina, I just love you. Thank you. Receiving that as well. Jeffrey, mahalo for your compassion and courage and trust. Thank you guys. Yeah. I really touched about that. Yes. Definitely meeting Alina. Costa Rica, maybe <laughs> could be anywhere. Yes, definitely. There will be definitely in-person stuff. And that's the thing where, um, I think I will do, do my, um, I will do a live stream on my life purposes change and tra transition because it has in such a big way that and I think part of being out here facing this stuff, sure, I've been going through my own stuff, but I didn't realize my purpose was changing at the same time, you know, like, but it's always been the plan. It's always been the plan to like build online for however many years and then start doing in-person stuff around the world. Like that was always the plan and the goal. Um, and I think just when I've been building momentum, going, 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 didn't realize I was already at that point <laughs> until I started doing in-person stuff again. So it's exciting. It's happening. It's happening. And so is my book. Oh, it's going to be recorded. Oh, recorded. Oh, my God. Oh, that's the other thing I've been doing is um, I'm re-recording all of my trust intuition content and meditations. So when I started online seven years ago in 2016 and I... I create a trust intuition and there's like over a hundred meditations um, that help you to trust intuition, clear out trauma, consciousness, shifting, connecting guides, blah, blah. There's so many different ones and they all have a specific purpose. So I recorded them all way back then. And, you know, like over the years, obviously my skills have improved. My voice has improved. The way I hold myself has improved. My consciousness has shifted and grown. Um, and so I was really, I've been called to re-record all those meditations massive fucking job right but i'm re-recording it i've hired a proper like recording studio audio recording studio and i'm getting them professionally recorded which is just like best thing ever i freaking love doing it it's gonna take a lot of time it's a big investment financially of course as well but i'm like this is so what i'm meant to do and i'm so excited because i'm recording meditations but once my book's released I'll be recording my book for audio book as well. And I'm like sort of practicing. <laughs> I'm like, you know, even though I'm recording the audio meditations, I'm practicing for my audio as well, my book. So anyway, lots of things I'm working on and seasons that's where I'm like, where I'm, you know, I'm earning more money than I've ever made before. I'm showing up less on social media. Like I'm not pushing. I'm back into my heart. I'm back in the love for myself, the love for my life. I'm protecting it like no tomorrow because it's actually okay for me just to fucking enjoy myself for a while. <laughs> like enjoy Hannah. Like I just, I'm so in love with my life again. And I'm like, I've needed to come back to this space. You know, like there's times when I complain about things and the driving and all this stuff. And I'm like, I actually just don't want to fucking be around people at the moment because I'm just starting to, find the ground of 
oh my God, the big picture. And then with my book, I'm like, oh my God. So I'm really excited about that. I'm really excited about that. So I've been doing in-person clients, writing my book, working with a fuckload of clients. That's why I've been quiet on live stream as well, because I'm working with my clients and I don't need to be showing up as much. I've been writing my book. I'm re-recording the Trust Intuition content. I've been living my life. We went on a holiday the first time in ages. First time I've been here, went to Byron Bay, got more planned. And it's just like, yeah, I'm really loving things. I'm like, yes, thank fuck for love. Um, but asked me that two weeks ago on the eclipse, it would have been a different story. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, how does it go through that portal? It's so interesting, right? When we're going down a wrong path, if you don't catch yourself on it, the universe will fucking pull you off path. Pull you back onto path, I should say, right? <laughs> oh dear. That's what was happened over the eclipse. That's why the, the earth got ripped out from underneath me again. It's so interesting. Like I'm just like, wow. Like I'm in total surrender with my path right now. I'm like, okay, universe, like <laughs> you got the reins right now because I'm just gonna turn up to the next moment because it's all I can do right now. <laughs> so yeah. My book, yes. Yeah, so I think there's a process with Amazon. So um, it's like it releases on Kindle first and then it, then hard copy becomes available. Um, you know, so I'll obviously keep you up to date with all the stages um, because I'll be doing signed copies and all the sorts of things. So yeah, it's coming. Yay, I love your space and your garden. Yes. Uh, peach trees are growing. I love it. And you updated your entire home. Yeah, it's a thing, right? It's so important. Uh, Deborah says, I am certain, I am in certain areas, other areas need improvement, awesome awareness. It's so good to check in with these things, right? Divine step number one, honesty of awakening your life purpose is honesty. And it is the like checking all areas of your life like this, the spider web, yeah? For those of you who've done it with me before. A vacuum robot, oh my God, I've been thinking about one of those because the animal hair, oh my God, it would be so helpful. <laughs> Oh, I just leave the house and it does the thing. Oh my God. Yeah, that's so good. <laughs> What's the name of the book? Okay, I'm not going to tell you the name of the book yet. <laughs> Once it's back from the editor, then I'll I'll tell you guys. All right. If anybody can guess it, then I'll give you a free copy, a free signed copy. <laughs> if you guess the name of my book. Um, okay. Feel like I'm in the same space. Yeah, it's so good, right? Cleaning gets rid of stagnant energy, which is another reason why we feel the urge to get out of the home. I know, right? It's such a thing. And then when someone else comes in, it's like, it's good. But because I had a cleaner for quite some time and then I ended up cleaning myself at one point for some reason. And I did, you know, I was like, because I clean and I was like, oh, it feels different because I'm cleaning the energy as well. So unless I have a cleaner who's cleaning the energy at the same time, not interested. <laughs> so maybe that will manifest in the future. Reality Awareness, the name of the book. <laughs> yeah, so you can put all your guesses in, um, but that's not the name. So there's definitely the Reality Awareness series coming up. This first book is you know, technically part of that series, I guess. But yeah. Eclipse was tough. I hit sick again. I was mad as hell because of the Nara. The Nara season fighting all the time. <laughs> like the Eclipse season, do you mean? Um, yeah, it just brings up all the old stuff to be cleared out. So yeah, coming home. <laughs> no, no, that's not it either. Um, it feels like a coming home, but it's not the name of the book. Um, yeah, I'm excited. Thanks for being here. Thanks for listening. Oh, Mars season. Yeah, lots of anger will be coming up for that. <gasps> Thanks for being here. Oh, it's 11.11 on the 8th of May. How about that? The 8th of the 5th. I know you guys say the 5th of the 8th. So 8 is the abundance number. 5 is the number of change. And 11.11 is the number of what's your thoughts, what you're thinking. You're on path, but it's manifesting wildly fast. So choose. I choose. Not I can't. I choose. I choose to hate it here changes the whole but you're like catch yourself you're like whoa 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 whoa, whoa. <laughs> what what and 22 people watching <laughs> love it okay guys thanks for being here thanks for letting me share my heart thanks for coming into my space and thanks for no negative comments <laughs> i will see you soon